Okay, so the chromatic number can grow. It's worse than that. There's a notion of girth. So skip to the bottom. What's the smallest cycle in that graph on the bottom? There's a big one around the outside, but there are two littler, two smaller ones, one on the left, one on the right. Which of those two is smaller? One on the right, I think, has size 8. The one on the left has size 9. So the girth of a graph is the smallest cycle, the size of the smallest cycle. So that one has girth 8. But what do you do, what do, you do if there are no cycles? So if there are no cycles, like is the case in a tree, we just say that the girth is infinite. The, you can't get around in a finite length of time. What do you call a bunch of trees? A forest. And so any graph whose components are trees is called a forest. So one tree is a forest. But some forests are not trees. The disconnected forests are not trees. Forest and trees, therefore, have infinite girth. So we're primarily interested in graphs which have girth, which is finite. What's the chromatic number of a forest? What's the chromatic number of a forest? Might be one. Are you with me? The chromatic number of a forest is either one or two. When is it one? Just a bunch of loose points. Has no edges. But once it has an edge, then it has chromatic number two. And you can color it with a greedy algorithm. Just grab a vertex, color it one, color the neighbors two, the neighbors of those one, and alternate. You'll never get an odd cycle because there are no cycles. So the chromatic number is two. So if you're going to get if you're going to get big chromatic number, you need some cycles. 